Does it look like this whenever you're caulking something? Here's a simple trick you can use to make caulking less messy. First, take a wet rag and go over the area that you'll be caulking. Next, you want to place your index finger right over the tip of the tool. And now when you pull the trigger, your index finger is going to evenly spread the caulk without making a mess. Go ahead and follow me for more DIY home improvement tips. And if you ever have paint peeling off your trim, here's an easy way to fix that. Go to your local Sharon Williams store and pick up some of this. Sand your trim first using a 120 grit sandpaper. Then apply this peel stopper using a paintbrush. If you don't have a Sharon Williams near you, go to Home Depot and pick up this product. Now paint your trim again with a good trim enamel. And that's how you prevent your paint from peeling in the future. So you should definitely use yellow frog tape when painting against wood trim. Yellow frog tape is designed for delicate surfaces. If I would have used regular masking tape on this wood trim, chances are I probably would have peeled off some of the finish. If you're looking for a paint that's good enough for high traffic stairs, then you should definitely check out this product. It's called Armor Steel Treadplex and it's made by Sharon Williams. This paint is really easy to work with and dries in about 4 hours. Once this stuff is fully cured, it is really durable and that's why perfect for stairs. You can apply it using a brush and rollers. Ever wonder how you can avoid these annoying roller marks when painting a wall? Yeah, these right here. See, the problem is your paint is drying too fast. And because your paint is drying too fast, your roller is creating all these roller marks. So to avoid that happening again in the future, get some of this stuff right here. And what this product does, it slows down the drying time of your paint. You just gotta add a little bit to your paint and you'll never have roller marks again. All right, let's remove some dated wallpaper. Removing wallpaper is not always the same process. So let's see what we have here. I can already tell that this one's gonna be a bit tricky. As you can see, it's just peeling off in little chunks, so we're gonna to have to try something else. We're gonna to need to bucket the warm water and some dip. Just pour this bad boy in here and fill it up. Next, we're gonna take the solution and soak the walls with it. Don't be stingy with the water. The goal is to soften up the wallpaper by getting it nice and wet. Next, we're gonna use this right here to spray the wall. This thing has like a bunch of serrated blades on the bottom and what it does is cut a bunch of holes into the wallpaper. Now we're gonna need some more water. The holes help the water get behind the wallpaper and loosen up the glue. And ta-da! Now this stuff just slides off. And if you have any stubborn areas, you can just use this straight blade. Now you can see there's some glue residue left on the walls, but that's no problem. I'm just gonna go ahead and sand it off using a 150 grit sandpaper. Don't miss part two where I post the final results. Go ahead and follow me if you want to see more DIY home improvement tips and tricks. Don't you just hate when this happens? Here's how you can prevent that in the future. After you put down your tape, you want to cover the edges with the same color that's underneath it. That's going to fill in any gaps that's between your tape and your surface. Once that's fully dry, you can go ahead and apply your second color. After applying the second coat of the second color, you can go ahead and pull off the tape while it's still wet. You want to go slow when pulling off the tape, and always pull it in a bit of an angle. And that's how you get super straight and crispy lines each and every time without any paint bleeding through ever. If you like this trick, follow along for more DIY home improvement tips and tricks. Real quick tip, if you have kitchen cabinets and they are doing this around the door handles, and door knobs uh, or the drawer pulls or whatever. That means uh, the paint that you used on the kitchen cabinets is uh, being broken down by the oils that are in your finger. Naturally, you have oils and from grabbing the door, the, the pulls all the time, what's happening is uh, the oil's getting uh, onto the surface and it's deteriorating the paint. So you're gonna have to use a different type of paint. So to fix this, you're gonna have to clean it with a degreaser. I like to use these brushes to get it nice and clean. Sand everything smooth, spot prime this with an oil-based primer, and then go over it with the better paint. So there's many paints that you can choose from, and they all depend on your skill level and your application method. A safe bet for the do-it-yourselfer is an alkyd or an oil-based paint. There are so many factors to consider when painting your kitchen cabinets, but I'll leave a link to a DIY guide below that's gonna help you pick out the right primer and paint for your kitchen cabinets. And make sure you follow for more DIY home improvement tips and tricks. Are you thinking about painting your wood paneling? Let me show you how you can take your wood paneling from this to make it look like this. So the first thing I like to do is clean everything really good using Crud Cutter Gloss Off. Next, I'll sand the wood paneling using a 150 grit sandpaper and my sanding disc. And once you're done sanding, you wanna clean your walls again before applying your oil-based primer. 
Let your primer dry for about 24 hours, and then you can come back and fill in any holes using a fast drying spackle by 3M. And to make sure that your walls are really smooth, go ahead and sand everything again with the 220 grit sandpaper before you even start painting. And this is what your walls look like after painting them with two coats of an eggshell finish. So today I had to remove some popcorn ceiling that was previously painted over. Unlike regular popcorn ceiling, you can't just wet it and scrape it off. So the goal is to get everything as smooth as possible using an 80 grit sandpaper. Once everything is sanded, I take my bucket of spackle, add some water and mix it up really good. Next, I'll use a 9 inch roller with a half an inch nap to add as much spackle to the ceiling as possible. I'll apply a 4x4 four four foot section and then skim everything with my spackle knife. And then it's back to sanding, but this time using a 220 grit sandpaper. Once everything is dry, you repeat that same process again. Apply your spackle, skim coat it, and sand everything with a 220 grit sandpaper. Now all that's left is to prime and to paint, and then your ceiling should look something like this.